Babies go through a lot. Also just consider the fact that a baby wipe is also recommended to remove tar from wheels. So yeah, essential should also contain things for mum. Like, you just had a baby, you are amazing. Okay, you so I know I probably say this before most videos, but this video is different because I am so, really so, so, so excited about making this because I've been wanting to do it for ages. I get so many requests and I just feel like it will be hopefully useful for quite a lot of people that are either new to my channel or that have been watching for a long time and may be pregnant or have friends that are pregnant or have small babies or something. Got my notes. The other reason I really wanted to do this video is because about a month ago I did a blog post entitled something along the lines of um, baby essentials you don't need but every list tells you you do. And there were like 50 items on there and honestly the list was quite a kind of tongue-in-cheek thing. All of the items on it were sourced from actual mums that follow me on Instagram and sent me over items that they'd found really, really useless but everyone had told them that they needed. It was really aimed to make people think more about buying loads and loads of stuff rather than the actual specific items themselves. Yeah, because the lists and all the things you're told that you need, that all comes from a good place, it really, really does. People want to help, but sometimes it's just not that helpful and it can all feel quite overwhelming. I feel like new parents or parents-to-be are often sort of quite vulnerable and can be almost preyed upon by some of the big brands to buy loads of stuff and it's just not necessary. So yeah, so today I wanna to talk about the things that you do need, the things that I think that genuinely are very helpful and wonderful and can help mama and baby and that are sustainable for one reason or another. Also, this video is not in any way sponsored. I'm not gonna recommend any specific brands for each of the items I talk about just because there's probably quite a few brands that will sell the items I'm suggesting. So really just do your own research based on budget, where you're based, etc. I quickly wanna talk about, I think, five or six different I guess mindsets or modes of behavior I think help when it comes to parenting sustainably and parenting simply. The first thing I want to say is secondhand, secondhand, secondhand. Babies go through a lot and they go through a lot very quickly and things get dirty and mucky and stained. Buying or acquiring secondhand is by far the most sustainable thing you can do as a new parent. And honestly, if you know people that have had babies and want to pass things off, as long as they're selective, please take them up on their offer. Facebook has amazing baby secondhand groups. You've probably got local friends who have had babies who might want to hand things down, or family. The crib that my kid slept in is the same crib that my dad slept in when he was a baby. And that's just also so, so special. Apart from the fact that we didn't have to go out and spend money buying a new one and acquiring even more new stuff. The second mindset or mode of behavior, it might sound really obvious, but when you're kind of heavily pregnant and looking to start to think about things you might need, it feels like you just want to get everything. And what I want to say is don't, wait. Find your own rhythm, see how you go, see what you need. You might end up getting, I don't know, a baby changing table that you just don't use from day one and it just sits there. Whereas had you waited and seen how your vibe is, where you tend to change your baby, you might realize that you actually really don't need one and you never would have bought one in the first place. Buy as you go. Shops still exist after you've had a baby. Especially with things like Amazon Prime now, you can literally get things, I think like, well, definitely next day. I think now you can even get within a few hours. When you have a new baby, people are really lovely and give you stuff, so you will get gifts. So again, that's why it's worth just holding back and waiting to see what you get. Um, you know, things like clothes and toys, you are sure to be gifted a few of these things. The last thing you want is to just get all these items early before the baby arrives and they just sit there doing nothing because you realize you don't need them at all. So please wait. The next one, and this kind of leads on from that, is repurpose. So, so many things are branded as baby specific when they're really not. They're just the same, but they just put the word baby in front. For example, um, baby changing table, it's just a set of drawers that you probably already own. A, a maternity pillow, you can just use a normal pillow with some padding, maybe a rolled up towel, serves exactly the same purpose. Specific play mats for tummy time, you can just use a normal blanket. A nappy bin, and we're gonna talk about 
about nappies in a minute, is basically just a bin with a closed sealed lid. The next thing I want to quickly say in terms of mindsets and modes of behavior is that essentials should also contain things for mum. Like, you've just had a baby, you are amazing, you deserve some beautiful, sustainable products as well, so please don't forget about yourself. I'm doing a lot of this. And the last thing I want to say before I move on to the actual items themselves is that babies really don't need much. They need to be fed, they need to be kept warm, they need lots of cuddles, but they are quite minimalist creatures in their nature. They really don't need much. They need you more than they need any single other item. Right, let's move on to the items. I'm gonna list off what I deem to be sustainable parenting essentials. Practical things you need as a new mum trying to parent consciously and simply and sustainably. Okay, so item number one, and obviously I'm gonna talk about this first because those of you that have been following me for a while will know that this is a subject I'm very passionate about, and that is nappies. So, eight million nappies are thrown away in the UK every single day, right? I heard a podcast the other day where someone jokingly said, with regards to the huge plastic pollution problem we have, they said, jokingly, I blame the babies. And do you know what? I kind of agree, but nappies are a huge contributor to landfill and there are alternatives. If you want more information around cloth nappies, check out my Instagram where I talk about it a lot and also debunk some of the myths surrounding cloth nappies. The hashtag is Marmalina times cloth, I think. And also if you are going to go down the cloth nappy route, which I hope you are, do check if your council offers a nappy voucher. Lots of councils do what they call a nappy voucher incentive scheme and give us money to buy cloth nappies. So please check if you are eligible for that. My council, for example, gave me 54 pounds to spend on reusable nappies, which actually gets you a long way. As I said at the start of this video, I'm not gonna mention or recommend specific brands, but I would say that pre-folds with a wool cover is probably the simplest and the most economical way to go. We used a brand called G-Nappies, but if I were doing it again, I would definitely use prefolds, um, cotton prefolds with a cover of some sort, probably wool. Also worth mentioning that you can get some amazing cloth nappies secondhand. The secondhand cloth nappy market is epic, um, so please, please check there first. Following on from cloth nappies, sorry, I'm getting quite passionate. The natural next item to get as a new mum looking to parent sustainably and simply is cloth wipes. So baby wipes are a total scourge on the planet and are blocking sewers and drains up and down the country. They're responsible for 90% of all matter blocking sewers in London, and yeah, something has to change. And the thing is, there are alternatives, so let's use them. Cloth wipes are basically um, flannels, I guess. There are brands that sell cloth wipes specifically, but uh, you can equally also just cut up towels, cut up tea towels, cut up old jumpers, anything really. And then just like with the nappies, you pop them in the washing machine and they come out good as new. Disposable baby wipes are just such a big no-no for me. Cloth wipes not only are more environmentally friendly, are actually way more efficient. They just work. Disposable wipes are just really crummy and really smell bad and, and really smell bad and also just consider the fact that a baby wipe is also recommended to remove tar from wheels. So, yeah. The next essential, I'm gonna get my book, um, that I would recommend as a new parent wanting to live consciously, simply, sustainably, is clothes. So I would just go for very simple cotton baby grows and where possible, organic cotton baby grows. Onesies, basically, they just never go out of fashion. They can easily be handed down. There's ones you can get either with little um, feet at the end to keep feet warm, or you can get kind of footless ones, which is cool if you want to add little booties or socks, but the ones that kind of cover the foot as well, there's definitely a name for those, might be more efficient because you don't need to worry about socks or shoes or those kind of things, which also tend to fall off quite a lot. Depending on the time of year, you might also want to get some little mittens and a hat. I know that um, when I was in hospital, they didn't let you leave hospital without a hat on your baby. And baby grows are an amazing thing to get secondhand. We've already talked about that up front, 
but secondhand baby grows are the way to go. The babies get through them so quickly, whether it's poop or sick, they're just churning through them. So buy secondhand where possible. The next suggestion I have is a sling or a buggy or both, or basically some sort of transport system. I would definitely start with the sling because when they're tiny, they just wanna be close to you. Also perfect to get secondhand. A lot of people start with the sling and get a buggy later on when um, the baby's a little bit bigger. But to begin with, what I'd recommend is going to a sling library that's near you where you can try on a whole bunch of different types of slings. It really depends on your body shape and also your lifestyle. Um, like I'm quite petite and would need a totally different sling to a taller lady. So yeah, best to try before you make any decisions. The next essential you'll need is probably most people is, if you have a car, a car seat. Um, and that is probably one of the only items I'd recommend getting new. I think they say that secondhand car seats for a newborn is a no-no, so definitely sort yourself out with a car seat. The next item you'll need is muslins. So muslins are basically like um, light kind of pieces of cotton material, which you use for anything from, well, we use them as a sunshade, we use them to wipe up sicky stuff, we use them to change nappies, sometimes we even use them as a nappy, um, we use them for blankets, they are basically like very, very versatile and really useful to have as a new mum. I'd use them also when I was breastfeeding and wanted like to maintain a bit of modesty, I'd just grab a muslin. Also, when you need them less and less, you can cut them up and they make really good cloth wipes. The next one is toys. So yeah, um, toys is a big issue, but basically all I wanna say is that the simpler, the better. A new baby is already so stimulated by coming out into this world from having been in a dark womb. Everything is just quite intense for them. So the last thing you want to be doing is getting them noisy, flashing toys, which I think can really easily overstimulate a baby and you don't want that. Mainly they're just going to want to watch you, but if you do want to get some toys, some Wardorf or Montessori inspired toys are really nice. So some simple wooden blocks or some books, you really don't need much, apart from the fact that you can repurpose, remember we talked about that earlier, a lot of what you already have. So wooden spoons, saucepans, also make great toys. Things like baby gyms, you can find these huge plastic baby gyms in most of the shops. Again, they're really, really quite fun to make yourself um, with like a simple wooden kind of A-frame shape and then hang things off it. The other thing to say about toys is please, please, please check out local charity shops for toys. Honestly, we have found the kids' favorite toys in charity shops and they're often wooden and they're often in great condition and they're of course like a fraction of the price. You're giving these toys a new home when they do not deserve to be going to landfill. So please, please shop secondhand for toys as well. The next item you'll probably need is some sort of place for your baby to sleep, unless you are co-sleeping, which I did with Sunny, not with Jack. Um, but then ultimately they will probably move out of your bed, maybe. Um, but if you aren't choosing to co-sleep, you'll probably need some sort of Moses basket or crib or co-sleeper. As I said at the beginning, we used for Jack uh, the crib that my dad slept in when he was a baby. We had planned to put Sunny in that as well, but in the end, yeah, he just ended up co-sleeping with us. There's also something called a sleepy head, which a lot of parents opt for. I don't know the etiquette around secondhand sleeping gear, but I do know that when you go and stay in a hotel or a b, &B they certainly don't get new mattresses for their cots every time they have a new baby to stay. So, I don't know, I feel like a secondhand organic mattress would be perfect, but you need to do your own research around that area. The next one is some sort of blanket. We have a really lovely lambskin one that we've taken camping with us because it maintains the warmth. We've put it now in Sunny's bed. Some sort of amazing blanket that they just love and get joy from and you get joy from. Maybe it's something handmade by a lovely relative or a friend, but yeah, a gorgeous blanket is a bit of an essential. If you are gonna be breastfeeding, then you have everything that you need right here. You may be wanting to bottle feed, um, so you might wanna consider getting breast pumps and bottles and teats. But also I'll say if you're not sure and you really want to breastfeed, just wait 
just wait until you get to that stage where you need to pump or want to pump and then get hold of the breast pump and all the stuff. That's how we did it. Um, because otherwise it just would have been sat there for, I know, uh, half a year, seven, eight months until I decided to start pumping. So just wait, unless you know from day one that you're going to be bottle feeding. And there's other things of course when it comes to things like teething, but again, like a rubber spatula in the freezer so it goes all hard and cold is so soothing for a baby. Ditto frozen blueberries, they can gnaw on those and really, really helps the pain. Um, there's so many toys and gadgets out there for teething that you just don't need. Same with feeding and high chairs and bibs and all of this stuff. Remember I talked about the muslins earlier? They make amazing bibs just tied up behind the baby's head. I'm just gonna end the video by talking about a few essentials for mum because remember how I said at the beginning, like, you are so important. You've been through a life-changing experience, so make sure that mum is looked after as well. Definitely get hold of some reusable cloth breast pads if you are breastfeeding, because you'll probably leak. And disposable breast pads, kind of like disposable sanitary towels, are just yucky and largely made up of plastic and make that horrible noise when you take the plastic bit off whereas cloth pads are beautiful and soft and again just go in the washing machine with your nappies and with your wipes and get cleaned and come out good as new and you'll go through quite a lot because obviously you're feeding multiple times through the day so yeah definitely get some reusable breast pads and when the time is right you'll probably want to look into reusable sanitary wear as well. Other things I guess I would say for like a new mom wanting to parent in a conscious way are just small treats like a nice candle, you know, a lovely water bottle. They're gonna be thirsty if you're breastfeeding and if you're not breastfeeding, you just wanna look after yourself anyway. So some nice chocolate and treats for you. Some lovely bath salts or bath oil is so nice. Like there is nothing nicer than a lovely hot bath as a new mom. Um, 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 uh, yeah, so I really don't know how many things I listed off there and um, whilst I did a lot of prep to create this video, I'm sure I missed things off and I'll add them in the comments below. Please check out other videos on this channel because um, lots of things I talk about I kind of hone in in more detail on the rest of my channel and other videos, so definitely check those out. Ditto my blog, there's lots more content over there and my Instagram etc etc but anyway thank you so much for watching this was a bit of a longer video than normal i am gonna go and drink my now quite cold coffee and uh yeah otherwise give this video a big thumbs up leave a comment below with your sustainable parenting essential what you would recommend if you're a mum already to other mums to be and that's it i'll see you next time thank you bye